Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What was the moment you knew your relationship was over? My ex and I were not living together, but he had the key to my place. I told him that I was gonna go see my parents for the weekend, but then changed my mind last minute because I started feeling sick. I forgot to tell him and just went home after work and went to bed. I woke up around 10 pm to get a glass of water. And while I was in the kitchen I heard someone fumbling at the door with the lock. I freaked out because I lived on the 17th floor, so if it was a break in, I was fucked. All of a sudden he walks in. Dragging a tipsy girl in behind him. I just stood there while he tried to make up some sort of excuse as to why he was there. The girl was pretty shocked too. When after 7 years, a particularly cold conversation, and with tears in my eyes I said, I just want you to love me and she said. Well I don't, and don't you feel pathetic for having to ask. We had been long distance for a couple of months and I actually felt relieved to be hundreds of miles away from him. He never called me or texted, it was always me who reached out. I got tired of it and started calling less and less. One day, after we hadn't spoken for a few weeks. I called him and he answered and sounded surprised to hear from me. Conversation went, me, hey, it's me him, oh, hi. Why are you calling me? Me, no reason. Just to say hi him, oh, okay, well I was actually just doing something. Can I call you another day? And, after years of awful screaming arguments and stupid games, that's when I knew the relationship was dead. When I saw how she completely changed when her boss was around. She became much more pleasant, flirty, and amenable. That's when I realized the only reason she was dating me was in hopes it would make her boss jealous enough to leave his wife for her. She had picked on me for months. Constantly criticizing everything. I couldn't do anything right. I tried. I kissed her ass and apologized for every single perceived wrongdoing. After months one day I told her, calmly, you're mean to me. She blew up. Veins came out and she did that weird growl slash yelling thing and told me she'd cut my throat and burn down my house. I left with my kids to my parents house. Came back the next day she was gone. Haven't seen her since. And strangely, my anxiety is all but gone. I was at my best friend's wedding. When he saw his bride walking down the aisle, he had a grin so big it looked like it could have exploded right off of his face. He was so happy to be marrying this person. And when I thought about my, now ex, gf I realized that I just didn't feel that way about her. I will say, when I married my wife, I was grinning like an idiot. Three weeks before we broke up she described the kind of guy she would date if we broke up. She described her co-worker and I honestly thought they had hooked up by this point. To my delight, he was a good noodle and never wanted to be more than work friends with her. When he found out she left me to be with him he reached out and told me he was sorry for everything even though it wasn't his fault. I told him I'm not holding anything against him, but thanked him for being a good person. The day my mom passed away, the coroner hadn't even come for her body yet, with zero consideration on how I felt and what I was going through my ex-fiancé thought it was great idea and a good time to tell me he has been cheating on me for the last six years, and how sorry he was for it. He wasn't sorry he did it, but he's sorry because the other woman had lied to him about who she really was and he wanted me to comfort him because he felt betrayed by her. When I promptly broke up with him, he asked wait is this really goodbye, how could you do this to me now? The moment he accidentally sent me a text that was supposedly meant for someone else, making plans to hook up at his house. My only response to that was okay, be safe. I added quotes because I suspected that he did this on purpose to try and get me to break up with him, expecting some sort of angry response from me. He didn't get that. 
although I did get an earful from him a couple weeks down the line about how he never found me attractive physically or romantically. To which I responded, okay and never talked to him again. To this day, I will never understand why some people choose to play games rather than just be upfront. No matter, I'm now happily married to an amazing person. He stopped talking to me three days into a three-week holiday, I made the best of it, once home the silent treatment continued for another three weeks. He rolls over in bed one morning and starts talking like nothing happened. I should have ended it long before, but that was the moment I knew it was over. <coughs> Hanging out with them feels often like a chore than something you're excited about. Walking on eggshells to avoid them getting mad. They don't match your efforts like they used to. Noticing they don't listen when you're talking. They don't feel like home anymore. They download Tinder and see people. They cheat on you. <coughs> Married for 21 years. The last 10 were devoid of any love, warmth, or caring. I, am 53, did not want to get divorced and figured this was just the way the rest of my life would be. We were taking our third shot at marriage counseling and after a few months, my wife says she has to quit counseling because she wants to attend a meditation class at the same time. She had something better to do than work on our marriage. That's when it hit me that she didn't GAF at all about our marriage and I decided that I did not want that to be the rest of my life. We're currently two and a half years into divorce. It's painful and expensive. But personally I've never been happier. I am leading my best life. So so glad I decided to move on. When he went from spending so much time with me and giving me updates about his day without me having to ask him, to going missing in action for days on end to the point where I had to beg for him to spend some time together. Found out from a mutual friend that he had started seeing someone on the side two weeks before we called it off. Life was stagnant. We mutually called it quits after we had a talk, and it went better for both of us. We gave it the good old college try but we still grew apart. Good times. I hadn't slept in our bed for 18 months and asked don't you even miss me in here. No. Edit, I offered to sleep in the guest room due to my snoring, weight gain, stress of working several jobs, and general stress of life slash marriage. We never slept in the same bed again. I now know after therapy I was immensely depressed and am much better at taking care of myself both physically and mentally. While the marriage didn't recover, we have two amazing kids and my headspace is much more free. I was engaged to my girlfriend of 5.5 years, 3.5 dating to engaged, I noticed that out of nowhere she started acting very suspicious and more cautious of her phone around me and not wanting me to be around her when she was playing games with people on Discord which I didn't really care about. I knew something was up when I would tell her I loved her and to have a good day when she would leave for work and she would just kinda smile and nod. One day I was cleaning up around the house and noticed that she had left her computer open and saw some messages between her and a guy she plays games with talking about some things that I would rather not repeat. When I confronted her about it, I was gaslit and made out to be crazy. I knew then it was the beginning of the end. A year and a half later I finally had enough evidence and she admitted to cheating on me for a year and a half. Six months before our wedding. I'm still not over it after a year and a half later and I genuinely don't think I'll be able to trust the same again. This was a long time ago, but I still remember it vividly. All of our friends were meeting up at a bar, but I had to work. I was able to get off and was at the bar with my friends. Her and her friends showed up, and there was an unmistakable look of disappointment in her face when she saw I was there. That hurt. My last relationship was on the way out and we spoke on the phone where she confessed that she didn't know what she wanted out of life. She added that she couldn't give me what I wanted and gave me her blessing to date other people. Throughout our relationship. Her father had terminal cancer and when he died a year into our relationship, she just sort of shut off. 
It also didn't help that our communication was inconsistent and I never really knew where I stood in the relationship. Still, it was insanely painful and I was broken up mentally for months before meeting my current girlfriend. She had cheated on me, but swore it was a mistake and wouldn't ever happen again. I came over one morning to talk, and her phone rang. It was him. She took the call and once he realized I was over he said he was coming to kick my ass, as if I had done anything wrong. Never felt so dumb in my life. When he proposed to me in front of a crowd of over 3,000 people, at a job we both worked at, just two weeks after we had gotten into one of the worst fights we had ever had. What was the topic of the fight? He had joked about proposing and I told him I didn't feel ready to be married. The relationship lasted for about six months after that, but the ring never felt like anything more than a shackle. When I found texts on his phone to another woman. The one he always said I didn't need to worry about, but she was always in the background. I looked at his phone because it was never out of his hand and he was paying me zero attention. The messages spanned a year and a half, graphic sexual chat and photos, but more than that. Intimate conversations for hours every night about their lives, about how they felt about each other, he swore they hadn't actually done anything physical but that has to be BS. I just can't prove it. We'd been married for 10 years and together for 15, it hadn't always been easy but I still struggle with how this was going on for so long and I knew nothing about it. I was lonely whilst being constantly with her. I just hadn't realized that we were living in two different worlds, had different friends and hobbies. All that kept us together was a force of habit. The feeling after the breakup for me was a removal of a suffocating feeling that I'd felt for many years. Truth be told, I wish I was brave and mature enough to have explored and addressed those feelings sooner. With loneliness and anxiety came unhealthy coping and avoidant behavior. I worked the front desk in college, and would take my laptop down to play video games, chill job. She wanted to argue and came down at about 11 pm and gets mad and closes my laptop. She said she was done. I go out to get flowers after my shift, this is midnight, and go to her dorm room to give them to her. Another guy was already there in boxers, I'm almost sure the relationship had been over for a while, I just found out late. We'd had our ups and downs for the better part of 8 months, one day we met for lunch and she sat down and started talking. All of a sudden it was like I woke up from a dream and realized I wasn't attracted to or interested in them at all. There had been much worse moments so it was surprising it happened during everyday conversation. A few from my highlight reel. When she said she wanted to rejoin the Peace Corp and go back to Africa. I was not mentioned. When she said I want to move out of NYC and to Boston. You can stay here or go wherever you like. When she said, I think I like girls. When she had me sleep on a couch when I surprised her at college. I'm an idiot. When her dad, who I had just met, told her to stop being a bitch or she would lose me. Looking back at it, she was being a total bitch, but it was her dad saying it that opened my eyes. We broke up after her parents left. When we bought a house together and I proposed that same dad we closed. The next day she did a 180 and was completely different person. Stuck it out for almost 3 YRS but I had enough of the horrible treatment. Tried to tell her that I'm her partner and not another child in the house. Never got through to her. We used to get in some real bad arguments. These arguments would often end in her hitting me. Once in a while, she'd really go to town on me. I can take a hit, but she could throw a punch. Girl had a hell of right hook. Years of that, off and on. Anyway, one evening, one such argument turns into her just wailing on me. And I finally snapped. I pushed her up against the wall and was ready to hit her back. Just for a moment. I didn't. I walked away. The fight didn't end there, 
and the relationship didn't end that night. But I walked away for good not long after. She told me that I had a choice. Either I completely cut ties with all of my family and all of my friends. Or I cut ties with her. That was when I decided that her psycho had crossed a line that I wouldn't break. Very glad I dodged a bullet, very sad I lost close to 4 years of my life before I realized she was psycho. I was going through a cancer scare. She didn't come with me to any appointments because she didn't want to miss class. She was my best friend and the only person in the city who I told about what was happening. She, however, told several of her friends and classmates and let the news spread through our program, I think she liked the second-hand sympathy. She minimized everything, told me I was overreacting when I went to her for support, and told me I'd feel better if I just stopped touching the mess. When it came time to decide what to do when our lease ended, I chose to move home to be with my family. We broke it off, she moved out, and two days later I was diagnosed with cancer. I know it sounds bad, but I'm better for having gone through it. I'll always hold that cancer was one of the best things to happen to me. Catching him deep guts in a 16 years old, while he was 21 or 22, in his car was a hint. Also how dumb you should be to take a girl two streets away from my house around the midnight while I was going home after work. The second time he was out all night, we lived together, and didn't answer my texts. The first time it happened, I was so upset and I explained how I wasn't mad that he was out with his friends but I was worried that I didn't know if he was okay. They would drink and sometimes do light drugs. I had zero concern about cheating or other women and I completely understand friend time. The real issue was that I had seen his friends take really poor care of him when he was fucked up and I didn't trust them at all. He said that he was sorry and he would be a better communicator and he didn't want me to worry. Then he did the exact same thing the next week. There were other issues in the relationship but that was the straw that broke the camel's back. I couldn't picture myself laying in bed at 3 a.m. crying about him from anxiety over his well-being weekend after weekend when he cared so little about my feelings that he couldn't even bother to send me one text or wake me up when he was home. I had to wake up in the morning still no text or calls, my heart beating out of my chest as I checked to see if he's asleep on the couch. The second time she had a major overreaction to something small and not at all intentionally hurtful that I did in a span of less than a month. The second time she also scratched me in the face in the process and reamed me out for two hours. At that point I no longer felt safe around her and had to end things. When I finally realized how wrong it was to wait for him to change. I came to the realization that even if he hated his life, if he wasn't wanting to make any positive changes I couldn't mother him any longer. At some point in life you have to take responsibility for your own efforts to improve, you can't just expect it to change on its own. I was willing to love him through it all, with the promise we'd come out of it on the other side. But after six months of non-stop complaining and zero efforts to seek help or solve his problems, I realized he most likely never will and I wasn't willing to be the sole emotional support in the relationship. When he repeatedly shat on my successes and made my life milestones all about him. He'd gripe and find numerous ways to take my attention away from the people I love and the things I like to do, then lose interest the minute he had my attention. After I separated from my first wife. I was dating a girl who was also separated and gone through her divorce. Tried to keep each other out things. My ex-wife was being ridiculous, using the children as leverage, trying to extort money etc. It put me into a real bad slump slash depression. Then I saw the girl I was dating, knowing how badly it was hurting me literally do the exact same thing to her ex. The night I really started to be honest with myself about why we were in a relationship together. It was quite toxic on both sides, our personalities constantly clashed, 
in addition to our own mental health issues which fed off of each other and made it considerably worse. We both had fears of being alone, and they had a fear of abandonment. Deep down subconsciously we both knew we were incompatible, but instead of accepting it and ending on good terms, we constantly tried to mold each other into my perfect partner and grew steadily more frustrated with each other when it wasn't working. It really didn't help that this was a first major relationship for us both, and neither of us had good parents to teach us how healthy relationships work. Getting food poisoning a few months into COVID, March or April. In far enough where I realized the gravity of the situation. I felt sick all afternoon and she completely ignored me. I still made dinner and put the kids to bed, or began the bedtime routine and had to run to the bathroom and proceed to projectile vomit. And her response was, oh, you really are sick. And that's when I saw that I wasn't crazy, so much of this relationship wasn't right and that this person would leave me at death's doorstep. When I broke my foot in the middle of the night while tending to our five-year-old, and he could not be bothered to help me to the couch. My child helped me, then went to her bedroom and got two blankets and pillows, one for me and one for her, and slept on the floor next to me in case I needed help. Divorced him. She started staying up all night on her phone and coming to bed at 4 a.m. She cheated on me a couple years prior to this so I already knew what was coming. She swore there was no one else I believed her but broke off the relationship because of how distant she was behaving. Couple months later and she's introducing her new BF to our daughter. My advice, don't take shit from anyone. Get out and save yourself the hassle of being hurt again. When he abandoned me to go to work and then get drunk while our daughter died in the NICU. He didn't even answer his phone when the hospital and I called him repeatedly. I held my dead baby alone. I tried for three more years to make it work for my other children but I didn't love him anymore and I didn't want to see him anymore so we're getting divorced. When my 20-something yo daughters came to me and told me without any prompting or previous input from me, that they had experienced all the problems from my wife that I had experienced but never shared. They apologized for believing their mom's misinformation about me, and for the way it had affected their relationship with me. We grieved the loss of a best friend slash mom they will never get to have. And for the first time I was told that out of all our family members, I'm the only one who is actually mentally healthy, not the village idiot I had been treated as. I always wanted my girls to know the truth, I just didn't think it should come from me. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.